Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about backgrounding scenarios in North Dakota. Um, we're going to go through six scenarios uh, for backgrounding heifers and steers with some different um, rates of gain and uh, um, kind of look at the economics of each of those situations um, and what looks like the most profitable headed into the year as we get, you know, finishing up calf weaning and uh, uh, harvest and everything else and we turn our attention to should we background or sell right away or after weaning or whatever. So the first thing I just wanted to cover really quick is I have uh, three um, categories that I typically talk about if you hear me use these words. Weaned calves, those are going to be 500 to 600 weight calves and that's usually uh, got the uh, largest price difference between here, uh, steers and heifers um, at that 550 weight mark. Backgrounded um, calves, those are, those are going to be 750 to 900 pounds and the price gap from, uh, with those tends to fall from that 15 to $20 range to about $5 per hundred weight. And then if we're talking about finished cattle, I know it says 1,350 on the slide, but, uh, anywhere between 12, 1250 and 1400. And in that case, the price gap between heifers and steers usually goes away. Um, and, and fed cattle are, are pretty much priced uh, the same. So one thing, a concept that I like to uh, cover before we go forward is when I'm talking about the slide or the price to weight uh, relationship, and this is from 2018, but it, but it holds most years. Uh, and that is that as the price, and, and, and everyone's well aware, but this just sort of illustrates it. So we're all on the same page. Uh, you know, a 550 weight steer in 2018, anywhere between $175, maybe $180 for lighter weight per hundred weight or $1.80 a pound. And then you get to 800 to 850 weight steers, and those were closer to $145. So as the price went up, the price per pound or the price per hundred weight went down. Okay, so the, the bigger they are, the more valuable because they weigh more, but the price per pound. Uh, tends to fall. And that's simply because if I'm a, a cattle finisher, um, there's less weight for me to put on and less weight in theory or less opportunity for me to make money between what I paid and what I'm going to sell them for at the end. Right. But that price relationship can change and often does change. And a lot of it has to do with the relative price of feed. So this uh, chart is dated. I mean, it, it comes from 2000, but the relationship still holds and it holds true right now. And what this essentially shows is if you look at the line with the red triangles, that's a low, low corn price. So the a low price of corn back in uh, 2000 was $1.68 a bushel. And what you can see happened was the relative price, so it's showing this slope here, the price between 550 weight uh, steers or calves, heifers or steers, uh, and 850 pounds was fairly dramatic. I mean, they were from uh, plus $10 to minus $10. So in that case, the, uh, the, the relative difference was almost 20 bucks per hundred weight um, for, those, for those animals. And depending on... Uh, uh, what the actual price was, whether it was a hundred bucks, that could be quite significant, maybe 20% in that, in that scenario. Whereas if you get to $2 and 60 cent a bushel, that line flattens out a little bit more. So the relative price difference between a 550 weight and an 850 weight animal was, was closer. So it was more like at this, at this price, you were looking at about $5 more five. So a $10 difference. Okay. And then if you increase the price of corn even more, so, you know, use this as the price of feed, the proxy for the price of feed, this line gets even flatter, the one with the blue uh, diamonds on it, because the price of feed is higher. So in that case, you're talking about not that much difference uh, between the price of per pound of 550 weight versus 850 weight cattle, not nearly as much as when the feed price is high. And the reason for that's simple, the fact is that in that case, finishers are willing to pay producers to put the weight on for them. Okay. There's just, there's the, it's a little more risky for them. So they're willing to pay up higher prices for 850 weight cattle and the price of feeder calves relatively is lower because the pre price of feed is higher and, and it costs more to put weight on them and get them to finish. So that's what you wind up with in that scenario. So 
it doesn't necessarily, what this kind of can show is that it doesn't necessarily mean there's less money to be made when feed costs are high, as long as cattle prices are behaving uh, in this manner to, to where you're, you know, you're getting more return on those, on those 850 weight, 800 weight animals. And this just shows the same thing, but it shows it from the, from the standpoint of fed cattle prices. Okay. That when you have, uh, uh, lower lower cost of uh of feed you know that line's uh that slope is steeper when you have a higher price cost of feed that line gets more more shallow or or flatter okay and then finally just talking about some seasonality on prices and this is from an article from beef market central written by rob cook back in uh 2020 but essentially what it's showing is that there are months in a typical year and it's not always true we know we know that there can be some some things that happen uh that that can that can throw this off throw these throw these relationships off but it tends to be the case that february march and april have higher cattle prices than september october august for instance they tend to be lower so if we're backgrounding and we're looking at what the market is going to do headed into spring, a lot of times we're gonna get a bit higher price uh, or, or those 800, 850 weight animals are gonna be worth a little bit more in the spring than they would be in the fall. So when we're looking at fall prices or the price of, of, of uh, what, what 850 weight cattle are gonna be in you know, November, October, that kind of time frame, And we're trying to make a guess on where, where they're going to be in the spring by the time they're ready to be sold. If they're on feed for say hundred, 120 days or something, the seasonality tends to uh, be the case that, that, that there's a bit of an increase, not, not dramatic, but, but big enough. And obviously any increase helps. So that kind of can help us with our planning too. So as we go through these scenarios, I just want to lay out there clearly what the assumptions are for the prices that we're using. Um, grass hay, alfalfa hay, silage, these have all been updated uh, within the last day or so. Um, for and, and some of them, most of them had to be increased compared to last year. Uh, for instance, corn was increased, DDG prices, limestone, salt. Uh, the yardage costs, I increased them last year and then increased them again. Uh, at 45 cents, which is actually higher than than even what Carrington uses for their yardage uh, estimates at our at our feedlot facility, and and I try to do that just to make sure that that we're accounting for these costs as as close to accurate as possible, or possibly even overestimating a little bit, just so that when we get the result, we can feel pretty pretty confident in that hey, you know, this scenario would actually pay uh, even if there's a few unforeseen um, costs coming interest rates had to increase those pretty dramatically in fact they're double more than double what they were last year which is kind of what's happened marketing and vet costs i've increased those because of the cost of labor increase the cost of trucking has had to go up too uh, cost of fuel and, and again the cost of labor and we're still using three percent shrink and one percent death loss so again these are updated uh, uh, to reflect the current um, cost and economic environment we're, we're sitting in all right, so here's the six different scenarios the, that we're running. Uh, steers, we've got a slow rate of gain from 500 to 800 weight, and there's the feed cost uh, per day for that scenario. A 2.8 pound scenario going from 575 to 855, and then the feed cost of $1.76 a day. And then a, a more aggressive ration uh, going all the way from 575 to finish at 1270, and that feed cost 250. And then heifers, two different scenarios. Our lighter weight heifers going to 750 pounds at $1.33. A uh, little bit heavier weight to start with or weaned weight heifers at 550 to 850, but also at a pound, uh, 1.8 pounds per day. It's a little more costly because they're bigger to start with on average. And then a more aggressive uh, heifer uh, feeding uh, scenario going from five and a quarter to 805. And that feed costs, um, of course, higher also at a $1.74 a day. So we'll start with the steer backgrounding and finishing scenario. And here's the prices that I'm using for both the, the, the feeder calf coming in, because if, if I'm backgrounding, I got to charge myself what I would have been able to sell the animal for, um, right? And then at the same time, uh, then kind of a projection on what the uh, the 800 weight animals are going to be. So obviously, if we're looking at this 550 weight, you know, right around 200 bucks, 
on average, and this was pulled Monday, November 7th, uh, um, was when this was pulled. Uh, and, uh, and, and the live cattle price, by the way, is $1.55 uh, or $155 per, per hundred weight for the summer of 2023, since that's about when they would be, be ready. So here's our 500 to 800 pound uh, steers uh, scenario with a 1.8 pound uh, rate of gain and that $1.41 a day to achieve that. And you can see what the ration looks like there with grass, hay, some silage, DDGs, and some salt. And um, in the next slide, I show the table. That animal would be on feed for 167 days at that rate to get from 500 to, to about 800 pounds. Uh, the projected selling price for a calf that weight is 184.50. And the beginning value was $214 at 500 pounds. Here's the shrink, feed costs. The interest rates at 7% in this case, our lot cost being 45 cents per day, and then trucking a dollar uh, fifty. And in this scenario, we come up with a, a profit or actually a loss of $2.26 per head. So basically you're breaking even uh, zero for all intents and purposes. And the reason for that is because of these higher overhead costs and, and yardage costs or lot costs, um, the the animal being in your lot for 167 days it just eats away at your profits uh for too long and you're not making enough money on the amount of weight you're putting on because the yardage fees are just eating away at it uh for too long at for you know because you're paying 75 dollars and 15 cents uh yardage on that on that animal and so it just tends to eat into the into the profit when you're keeping it out there now and you can get feed uh, down a lot lower than $1.41 a day and still do it in 167 days, then this might start making some sense. But at, at, at that rate, uh, you're basically breaking even. Now the 2.8 pounds, a lot more aggressive ration. We're putting on another, an extra pound a day. Uh, we've got to put some corn in here, DDGs as well with the silage and the grass legume hay. So that's $1.76 per day. Okay. So in that scenario, that animal's on feed for 100 days, so quite a bit shorter period of time because we're putting on weight faster to get to 805 pounds. The prices for the incoming calf and then the sold calf are about the same. And the feed cost, again, is, is higher, but we don't get eaten away at by yardage so much. And instead, because we're on 100 days, it's 45 bucks instead of, you know, 70 80 dollars because they were on feed so long and in this scenario we're coming up with a uh, 58 dollar per head or 58 cents per day profit uh because we're because we're we're putting on the weight faster and yardage fees aren't aren't hurting us so much so in a, in, a, in essence we we are be able to generate a profit backgrounding steers from five and a quarter to 805 okay much more so than this 1.8 pound scenario that i just showed before uh, mainly because the, the yardage fees aren't aren't so prohibitive. And then our final steer scenario, 575 pounders to, to almost 1,300 at a really aggressive ration of 3.8 pounds. And that total cost is $2.50 per head per day to feed. So we run this scenario and the projected selling price is lower because we're going all the way to finish, but it's still pretty strong at $155 per, per hundred weight looking at the futures price. And so even with that $2.50 um, cost of feed per day per head, and then our lot costs, our yardage is still the same, 45 cents and everything else remains. Uh, we're, we're actually projecting $112.50, $112.49 per head. Um, mainly because we're doing that aggressive ration and relative to our yardage costs, our rates of gain per day uh, are, are pretty high. Okay, so yeah, they're on, in the lot 183 days and yes, our lot cost comes out to 82 bucks, but uh, we're getting up there a, a lot higher in weight, a lot faster. And so we're, we're able to, to overcome the, the yardage costs in that case. So the next we'll go through uh, three different heifer feeding scenarios, and these are the prices as of Monday, November 7th. Okay, so just a few days ago, um, and, and you can see, so when I pull the weights or pull the prices, I pull them for, you know, you look at the average for that weight, and then what, the, what they're selling, uh, the sell, sales weight, if it's, you know, 
800 pound would be about 172 170 bucks not much difference between those so our first scenario 450 pounds to 750 pounds uh, at 1.8 pounds per day that's a cost of a dollar 33 um, not feeding much corn mostly ddgs some grass hay silage and we come up with a, a uh, uh, the, the animals on feed for 170 days to get to that weight because of the slow rate uh, selling at 170 beginning value of 193 um, feed costs of $1.33 the yardage cost trucking everything's the same as our steer scenarios we come out with a profit of $2.22 per head again the biggest reason that it's that it's not a whole lot above break even that it's only 22 bucks really is uh, again that yardage costs uh, we're, we're, we're spending 76.50 on electricity and fuel and everything else uh, and we're just not, and, and it's taking a long time to get to, to get to the weight that we, that we need. Uh, whereas the other scenarios again are doing it much faster, maybe half the time. Uh, and so we're not getting, uh, eaten up by yardage. So the next scenario is the same rate of gain, but we're starting with bigger animals and ending with bigger animals. So we're going from, uh, 550 to 850, a little bit more expensive because they're, they're larger coming in. $1.44 per day, uh, not feeding any, again, any corn in this scenario, but 1.8 pounds average daily gain. And it's not a whole lot different than, than the scenario before. They're on feed a little bit uh, shorter because they, they, they come in a little bit heavier. But at the end of the day, we're only making $17.34 uh, per head. So very similar to the previous scenario. Uh, the price, the relative price differences are similar. So it would, it, it stands to reason that if you're only going to put on 1.8 pounds, the only way you're really going to see a big, uh, some value added to, to what you're, what you're trying to do is going to be in the form of, you got to get feed costs lower than our estimate here at $1.44 per day. You probably got to get that down 20 cents somehow, which may not be so easy to do because feed costs are staying, uh, pretty sticky and, uh, kind of stubbornly high right now. And, and then we can't do anything about the yardage so much. Now, here's my more aggressive heifer feeding scenario. Instead of 1.8, it's 2.8 pounds per day, going from five and a quarter to 805. Again, it costs more in feed at $1.74, but they're not going to be in the yard nearly as long. And you can see that we go to 90 days on feed. Um, we're uh, selling them at 802 pounds. The projected selling price, similar. Uh, the beginning value similar, just slight differences based on the, the exact weight and our feed costs are higher, but look, yardage down to 40 bucks. And as a result, we're, we're making almost a hundred dollars per head. Okay. 96, $98, uh, 9875, uh, per, per, per animal. And so what we here, here's a chart that essentially breaks it down, uh, for the most part and uh, each one of the scenarios that was run and it kind of sums it up nicely, I think. Uh, and, and, and it's a similar story that we see most years that the aggressive uh, feeding, the, the putting on weight fast, um, those scenarios tend to pay the most, mostly because of that overhead cost day after day. I mean, as, as far as overhead goes, it's it's the same whether I'm putting on a pound and a half or three pounds a day. I mean, the overhead, the, the, the energy, that kind of stuff. It's the feed that really, that really changes the feed cost that is. And if, and if you're able to achieve those, even with the higher feed costs, the higher rates of gain, then you really uh, eliminate that overhead cost or not eliminate it, but drop it to such a low uh, amount relative to the value of the animals. Then that's where you see the profits happen. We see it here. At 1.8 pounds on steers, for instance, uh, the price differences for 500, 800, 525, and 805, they're really not that big. But what you wind up getting is uh, a much higher profit um, because you were more aggressive and, and cut down on those yardage fees because of how long they were in there. Same thing with the heifers. 2.8 pounds, um, all of a sudden, now it's 96.75, whereas at 1.8 pounds, it almost doesn't even matter that much where they started or finished you're looking at almost almost 20 bucks a head basically so we got to put on the weight quickly 
uh, and that's what these scenarios are showing. And they're also showing that even with higher feed costs because of that uh, more um, flatter slope on the price slide, there's still money to be made out there. It just has to be done uh, with aggressive feeding. So some concluding thoughts on this. Uh, there's a strong incentive to background calves this year as, as cattle feeders have put a premium on 800 to 900 weight calves and due to higher feed costs uh, and buying wean calves through finishing. Backgrounding heifers tends to have two advantages, and this is true just about every year. You close the price slide gap between steers and heifer, heifers up to uh, about 850 pounds. And this year, putting on the weight is the profitable way to go, uh, holding on to them for a long time and trying to uh, you know, get there, but it, it, holding them in the yard forever, uh, it's, it's just not nearly as profitable. Uh, more aggressive rations are much more profitable than, than a slow rate of gain, as I've said numerous times already. Uh, and this is due to those higher yardage costs that we're having to pay this year. And then the most profitable scenario is backgrounding heifers at a high rate of gain in terms of the amount of money per day that you, that you tend to make. So I want to thank you uh, for listening. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this or, or gave you some idea on what, what you can expect for this year. Uh, good luck. And uh, hopefully, hopefully this winter is uh, uh, a lot more mild and we're able to continue to put that weight on and, and not, um, not be, you know, uh, dealing with some of the adverse weather conditions that it seems like we always have to. Thank you. Mm -hmm.